Sonic Origins. This should have been a home run. I mean, it's a collection of beloved classic games with additional features and some extra content. That should have been a winning formula. And yet Sega has found a way to screw that over thanks to its kind of shady DLC scheme where they try to separate a bunch of content and also their interference with the game's development that has ultimately led to a worse outcome based on what one of the game's developers said on Twitter speaking out saying that they're frustrated with the game's overall quality. Now looking at Metacritic right now you'll see that the PlayStation 5 version has a relatively favorable score of 79 but it's no home run. There are issues with it, with outlets highlighting a lack of features, a lack of content, and just enough sprucing up of this package to really justify this collection, this remastering of this collection, and the removal of the classic versions. Here's a report from Game Informer, whose headline reads, Sega's delisting classic Sonic games from digital stores ahead of Sonic Origins launch. Matters aren't helped by the fact that Sonic Origins ships with certain bugs and performance issues that obviously shouldn't be present in a remastered version, the definitive version of the Sonic classics, which reminds me a lot of what happened with GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition, which was supposed to be the definitive versions of these three games, only to ship buggier and in a worse state, and in a way that made people just miss the classics. Now, the user score here from just 20 ratings is currently sitting at a generally favorable score of 8.7. On Open Critic, you can see that the top critic average is 78%, about the same as the 79% on Metacritic. Though if you go to a much larger sample size of players on Steam, you'll find the score is currently sitting at a mixed percentage of 57% from 695 user reviews. And scrolling down, there's one particular review that goes into extensive detail that's been heavily upvoted and that breaks down what's missing or what's just not really all there, as well as stuff that they messed up or regressions that make this package less than ideal. Starting with no integer scaling, all four games look just as blurry as Sonic CD 2011. Some may also recall that Sonic games have come out on mobile. Well, many report that this version looks worse than when they did on mobile. Mission mode, which is this extra mode that they introduced for Sonic Origins, which is supposed to allow you to take on objectives while doing Sonic levels, is comprised of bite-sized, generically designed levels. Knuckles isn't playable in CD. Don't get me started with Amy. And keep in mind that it was advertised that Sonic Origins would feature new playable characters, but people are reporting anyone else notice how we didn't get any new characters in Sonic Origins despite Sega promising us new characters. In fact, back in April of 2022, Sega had confirmed Knuckles will not be playable in Sonic Origins Sonic CD port. So a distinct lack of new playable characters as was promised is not sitting well with folks when it comes to Sonic Origins. No basic customization. Sega couldn't be bothered to add the most basic options between all four games like hackers modders do. Island Tour DL LC, which is supposed to be one of the bits of extra content. You can see it in this confusing Sonic Origins chart where one of the features highlighted is camera controls over the main menu islands, something that's only being featured to those who purchase the Digital Deluxe Edition or the Premium Fun Pack add-on. That's facing criticism for how lackluster it is. It just allows you to zoom in on each island, not even rotate them. And then the animated characters on Island DLC, all of them are ripped from Gens slash Force is also highlighted as a special bit of content you get if you order the premium fun pack and the digital deluxe edition. It's scummy enough that that stuff wasn't just included in a base package for what's supposed to be this collection, but making matters worse is that even if you do pay extra for that stuff, it's nowhere close to worth it. More complaints about certain characters not being featured in this collection. Super Sonic isn't in Sonic 1. Some Japanese promo images showed him in Scrap Brain. You can only access him using debug mode just like on mobile. Is this a nitpick? Yeah, but maybe they shouldn't have blatantly lied to consumers. Also another parallel to GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition is that these Sonic ports are apparently mobile ports. So a lot of the flaws from those ports persist in 
this re-released, remastered collection. This collection also introduced a new move called the Drop Dash, but this is being labeled as a pure lie. It's actually a disguised Spin Dash animation that happens for a split second and doesn't feel great to use because you won't be able to control yourself in midair. The museum, which was supposed to be a collection of Sonic history, art, music, and whatnot, that's been criticized. So-called never-before-seen concept arts. There are like six of them. Everything else are harmony covers and character sheets. Video section has none of the cool 90s ads, promo videos, or even documentaries. Normal and premium sections offer very little content. Just another underwhelming element of what was supposed to be an ultimate package. Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic CD are straight up just the mobile versions as I previously highlighted. Missing rolling SFX and CD hasn't been fixed and the extended camera is still absent. Horrible audio quality used the remastered OSTs for Sonic 1, CD and Sonic 2 from mobile. Sonic 3 and Knuckles, the only new thing here isn't given the same treatment so its soundtrack is really muffled and on top of that CD's two soundtracks are super quiet and also in bad quality. Audio is definitely an area that I've heard a lot of criticisms about with Sonic Origins. The music DLC, Chaotix 3D Blast and Spinball misnamed countless tracks. CD's ending animation looks like one of those uh, interpolated anime clips. Worst part, it's sped up by times four and there are no sound effects in the beginning so it instantly plays the credits theme. The gallery also plays it off sync and it doesn't feature the bad ending version. The new Sonic 3 and Knuckles tracks, tracks sound muffled, quiet, and overall don't fit the stages. And finally, De Nuvo, which is negatively affecting performance and it's just a form of DRM that people, especially in the PC gaming realm, utterly despise. Now, the review does highlight some of the pros, namely that the cutscenes look great, the restoration elements included in this game were done well, and the new Sonic 3 and Knuckles remaster, despite the collection's flaws, is pretty good overall. Though this was done by Headcanon, the cutscenes were done by Tyson Hess and Powerhouse. A lot of the positive elements about this game are outsourced to third parties and not done by Sega. In fact, if a developer's account is to be believed, Sega made this package worse. This is Twitter user Stealth, software developer at Headcanon, who helped develop Sonic Origins and are the developers behind the well-received Sonic Mania. Here is what this developer had to say about just the whole Sonic Origins launch situation and the general disappointment that's being felt among Sonic fans who feel like this Origins collection should have been much more than what we actually got. This is frustrating, I won't lie and say that there weren't issues in what we gave to Sega, but what is in Origins is also not what we turned in. Integration introduced some wild bugs that conventional logic would have one believe were our responsibility. A lot of them aren't. Headcanon handed in their work to Sega for them to touch up, and the changes that Sega made actually screwed over a lot of the work that the folks at Headcanon put in. It messed up the behind-the-scenes coding in a way that introduced new bugs. And while Stealth admits that they weren't necessarily perfect, what Sega did to touch up what they handed in just made things that much worse. Stealth continues, Regarding Origins, we were outsiders creating a separate project that was then wrangled into something entirely different. We knew going in that there would be a major time crunch and we worked ourselves into the ground to meet it just so this would be made and released. So it's abundantly clear that the developers were crunched and then rushed to release this game by a certain time frame and with no extension to really make sure that this collection is in the best state possible. Well, the results speak for themselves. The statement continues, Again, I can take responsibility for my and my team's mistakes, and there were some, some actual mistakes, some overlooking, some rush jobs, some stuff we noticed but weren't allowed to correct near the end. It's absolutely not perfect, and some of it is from us, it's complicated, so he's not just saying it's all Sega's fault, there were elements of the development where we were also making mistakes here and there, but at least Stealth has the introspection to see where those mistakes are, admit those mistakes, and seems to be implying that a delay would have been greatly beneficial for this project, and Sega not tampering with their work to a point where it introduced new bugs would have definitely helped with the quality. I'm extremely proud of my team for their performance under such pressure, but every one of us is very unhappy about the state of Origins and even the state of the Sonic 3 component. We weren't too thrilled about its pre-submission state either, but a lot was beyond our control. It's abundantly clear that if it was up to the development team at Headcanon, they would have absolutely delayed this project, 
polish it up, fix all those mistakes, and ensure that this was a package that Sonic fans would be pleased by, a collection that justifies its remaster label. You can see right here, the development team tried, they asked, they pleaded, we asked to do major fixes near submission, but weren't allowed due to submission and approval rules. We asked about delays early and repeatedly, but were told they weren't possible. We offer to come back for post-release fixes and updates. We do not yet know if this is happening. They rush this game out to launch. They know it's not in the best state possible. They know that it's not reaching its maximum potential. The development team here is offering to ensure that even post-launch, even after the backlash, they'll fix what's wrong with this package and they'll spruce everything up to a state where fans expect and even then, Sega's not being receptive. The head Canon development team haven't been told whether this will be a possibility. They're being wishy-washy about that, and I have to wonder, does Sega give a damn about this collection at all? Because it certainly doesn't feel that way. And it's frustrating for this development team whose name are on this product that they know isn't in its prime state. We want these problems to be addressed. We provided a ton of feedback during and after development for both Origins and its Sonic 3 integration. We have done a good chunk of work after our work term was over to fix things, support Sega, and to prepare for future updates. This development team actually cares about this collection, and they've gone above and beyond, but Sega has not met them halfway or a quarter of the way even, and the fact that a third-party studio that work has been outsourced to is giving us more insight and information and more of an apology, that really highlights that Sega just doesn't seem to care. I have to apologize for not addressing anything like this sooner, but you must understand many things of this sort are considered unprofessional and can hurt our relationship with Sega, meaning no Origins updates and no further 2D pixel Sonic games from us. There's a potential of retaliation, of bridges being burned, but there comes a point where when your name is being smeared because of things that are not your fault, you do have to say something, and if it means ruining their relationship with Sega, I say, well, it is what it is. If Sega won't play ball, if they won't make this a two-way street relationship and, you know, they don't care about the work that third parties seem to care more about, then it might just not be a worthwhile relationship. Finally, why am I talking about it now then? Well, there's just too much scrutiny over things that both are and are not related to us, and I don't want to sit in the back in silence while people are asking why and how things happen to a product they put so much hope and money into. I hear you, headcanon hears you, we wanted this to be right then, and now there's so much that you'll never know or understand within the realm of this kind of work, but know and understand this, we try our best to our own detriment, and we care about our work and about Sonic. Basically, they're saying we're making a case for ourselves, we're defending ourselves because our studio's name is being smeared to a degree that just isn't fair when people don't know what happened behind the scenes, when people don't understand the negative effect that Sega, the publisher, had on the development of this game and how was Sega's ultimate decision to not delay the game. Stealth also added some additional clarifications, noting that there seems to be a lot of confusion about this. I did not say that there was another build from us that they didn't use. What I was trying to say was that they made major modifications to the build we handed in, the one that we did submit. Some origins related, some not. It affected some of our work. When somebody else asked how did Sega release the wrong version, Stealth once again clarified that I did not intend to say that Sega released the wrong version of our submission. Sega's changes to our submission changed how it performed. So there isn't some, you know, Snyder Cut, if you will, sitting in the back collecting dust. They took the Snyder Cut and then butchered it up and then shipped that as if it were the Snyder Cut is basically what Stealth is trying to imply here, from what I understand. Or at the very least, mess with it enough that this delicate, balanced house of cards kind of crumbled and fell apart in certain areas, and they try their best to get it delayed, to do more work on it, to go beyond what their responsibilities were because they actually cared. And, I don't know, it almost feels like that was kind of taken advantage of by the publisher. It's just an unfortunate situation for what should have been a very easy win. If this is the standard of quality we can expect from Sega, then that makes me that much more worried about Sonic Frontiers. A game whose gameplay reveal didn't go down as Sega was hoping it would, it just wasn't received positively. And, in an interview, Sonic Team had 
Takashi Izuka insisted that this wasn't because there was anything wrong with the game. It wasn't what we presented, but rather that fans don't yet understand what this new gameplay is. It's just an open world Sonic. It's not rocket science what we're seeing in the videos. It's just it looked really rough around the edges. So many aspects of it looked technically unpolished and on a design level didn't look compelling. Though, of course, I'm going to wait until the final game to judge. Many fans and even people who got their hands on the game agreed that this feels like a game that should be delayed. But Sega has insisted that this is a game that won't get delayed, insisting that when the game launches, people will get it, that uh, it'll be of high quality. But with the way they handled Sonic Origins, it's hard to take their word for it. And it makes me all the more concerned that their standard of quality will be apparent in Sonic Frontiers as well, though I hope that's not the case. This is the game where they want to pull all stops. It just doesn't look that way based on the footage we've seen and with it being months out and with Sonic Origins launching the way it did, it just makes me that much more pessimistic about the future Sega releases, but I suppose only time will tell. At the very least, as far as the Sonic Origins situation goes, yeah, I fully believe that Stealth is being truthful here, and given their position, I would have spoken out too. You know, there's only so much of this crap you can take before you have to kind of defend your honor, if you will, and express how much you did care, how much you did try, and how many forces did ultimately interfere. It just wasn't up to them to ship a better version of the game. It was ultimately Sega who greenlit and mandated that the game ship in a substandard state. So I'm glad we got clarification on that front, but still highly unfortunate that Sonic Origins didn't reach its full potential, which is the trend in the AAA publishing landscape. Well, at the very least, that's one man's take on everything. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on stealth sort of slamming and ousting Sega for their role in diminishing the quality of Sonic Origins and what your experience has been like with this collection if you bought it, if you've been playing it. Share your thoughts below and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.